just by having financing options doesn't mean you're going to get that improvement. It's all about how that case and how that treatment plan is presented and how the dollar amount is presented. And that's really the magic moment there. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Raving Patients Podcast. As you know, I'm your host, Dr. Len Tao. I do want to thank our sponsors, both Dental Intelligence and the Doc Sites, for their support. Uh, being able to come to you every single week to your inbox, Fridays at 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, today's episode, I'm, I'm really excited because I get to talk some, about something I'm really passionate about. Uh, many of you know I, I talk about third-party financing. I talk about how to help it increase case acceptance. We're going to be combining those things. Today's episode is called Boost Case Acceptance with Payment Plans. My guest is Andy Cahoy from Cherry Technologies, who they have a product that's called Cherry. And um, I use it personally in my practice quite, uh, prior to re retiring. Um, and it's one of my preferred vendors, I guess you can say. I do recommend um, if you're listening to this to pay attention because it is, it is a great uh, product. So I'm going to introduce Andy and I'll read his bio and then we'll, uh, we'll jump right in. So Andy received his BS in engineering from the West Point and has an MBA from Stanford Business School. He spent over five years as an active duty infantry officer in the U.S. Army. He has been leading high performance teams for 10 plus years and now serves as a chief revenue officer at Cherry, a leading patient financing company for dental practices. So please welcome to the Raving Patients Podcast, Andy Cahoy. Andy, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks so much, Lynn. It's a pleasure to be on the show. Appreciate it. So as I mentioned, um, I am a big fan of Cherry. Um, I talk about it in all my sessions um, they made it into my, um, my on-demand workshop called the art of dental financing. So I am very familiar with it and I'm, I'm glad we're going to be able to talk about it and inform other people about this great service to dental practices. So I think, I think the first thing, um, I want you to do is, is kind of expand on your bio a little bit. Um, yes, you are chief revenue officer at, at Cherry. Um, so why don't we start off by you introducing yourself to a little bit greater extent and also expanding on exactly what Cherry does for practices. Absolutely. And thanks again for being, for um, inviting me on the show here today. Um, but yeah, like you mentioned, I, um, I studied chemical engineering in undergrad. I spent five and a half years as an active duty infantry officer in the Army. Really enjoyed um, that time in my career. Pivoted to the private sector, and I used an MBA as a way to do that to figure out what I wanted to do, but ultimately wanted to get into business and technology. I was at a different startup and a growth company for a number of years. Really enjoyed um, growing and leading our sales and operation teams there. Um, and now I've been at Cherry for a little over two years. I have the good privilege of serving as the chief revenue officer here. And I think the most this is one of the most fulfilling um, roles that I've had in my career because I really enjoy working with these medical practices to help achieve their goals by leveraging buy now, pay later technology. And we've done that with over 15,000 practices um, since I joined. And we've seen a lot of growth. We've seen a lot of success. But more importantly, we've seen success in the practices. And that's what we're here for, right? So, um, but that's that's what we do is we, is we are a buy now, pay later technology platform using buy now, pay later technology to help practices achieve their goals. Um, and that's that's what Sherry does. Perfect. I think that's great. Um, obviously, as you know, more than anybody, there is a a very big or a very competitive marketplace we have there. Um, a lot of people, a lot of different companies are in there. So I think, I think the first thing I want to talk about is, is that patients expect some sort of payment plan in a practice. So can you shed some light on that, on your feelings related to that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, let me throw a few stats out at you here. So 47% of Americans, according to the Motley Fool in some, some recent research that they did, cannot handle a $500 emergency without worry. And then 57% of Americans can't afford a $1,000 emergency expense. And that's according to Fortune. So basically, and the takeaway here is half of the people out there have a significant amount of stress or worry when there's not a pocketed expense that's $500 to $1,000 or more. And unfortunately, that's, that's certainly the case in, in this business. Right. So I think that the, the first takeaway here is that there's absolutely a need to make your treatments more accessible and affordable. Um, and then the other stat that I'll throw out there for you is, according to the Federal Reserve and some of the research, 24 percent of adults went without some form of medical care last year because they couldn't pay. And guess what? Unfortunately, was the most frequently skipped type of medical care. It was dental, um, dental treatments. 
So there's there's definitely a need in the market to make um, treatments more affordable. Got it. And I I think I think that's a very big key part of of really helping a practice increase their case acceptance is making it affordable for the patients. If the patients can afford the treatments, they're more than likely to say yes to it. And offering some sort of payment option, okay, to them is a certain, certainly a, a big key in getting them to, to be able to say yes to treatments. So what are some ways or what are some ways that payment plans can help practices achieve their goals? Yeah, that's a great question. And what I like to look at, because there's a lot of uh, other companies, in particular in technology, that have really figured out how to leverage payment plan technology for this exact exact use case, right? So if you look at anywhere else these consumers are, and these, these are the same consumers that are your patients, right? They're used to using payment plans elsewhere, right? So if you go on the Apple website and you're looking for a new iPhone, for example, and you go to that iPhone page, what it'll say is it's $1,296 today, or it's as low as $54 a month, right? You see that on Amazon, on their product pages, you see that on Peloton, where it'll say it's $2,700 today, or it's as low as $63 a month. And the reason that they do that is that studies show that by presenting that full price alongside a monthly amount, that that technique alone will increase conversion rate by about 25%. Um, it also increases the average ticket size, which that's a little bit of a different um, you know, application to our business, but that that is kind of full treatment acceptance, right? So not only does the likelihood of full treatment acceptance go up when you do that, but the likelihood of getting that case accepted in the first place also goes up. Um, and that's I think that's really the insight and bringing that same technology and methodology into the dental practices is 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 what we do best. Yeah, it's amazing to me. Everywhere you turn, it's always presented the way you present it, which is this is the pay in full price. This is the pay in the monthly price, and that's why we call it. It's almost like layaway, but you're 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 getting the product up front, but you're taking months to pay it versus traditional layaway, which is you have to pay them before you get the product. Yeah, and the last thing, and the last thing I'd mention that before we get into more goals that we hear. Um, our payment plans, even though that is a big use case, is making it more affordable. That's actually not the only use case, right? Um, a lot of consumers prefer this payment option now out of convenience. And these are folks that could afford to pay out of pocket, right? So it's also good to remember that payment plans are not always about affordability for every patient. And it's often most helpful for the patients that don't need it, right? And for those patients, offering 0% really is a perk, right? Like that's, it's a perk of visiting your practice to offer true zero percent patient friendly healthy options right um and it's a great way to retain those valuable patients and enhance their experience i agree with you 100 percent. so uh, well, you know one of the parts of the question was what are you what do you see are several common practice goals um, that payments can, payment plans can provide practices with we hear goals from a lot of different practices but usually they fall into three different buckets the ones that we hear the most and we're excited about these because these are some, some things that we can help them accomplish. Um, but number one is treat more patients, right? Practices want to increase their case acceptance rate. I think that that's a goal that's shared by a lot of practices. Second is complete full cases. They want to treat patients optimally, right? Not And not kind of settling for kind of that minimum standard of care. Um, and then the third goal that we hear a lot is retain great patients, or sometimes this comes in the form of offering elective or cosmetic treatments, increasing fee for service, um, and that sort of thing, right? And offering preferred payment methods are a great way to do that. But I would say that payment plans are exciting because they're a way for pra a practice to to really strive to achieve all three of those goals. Yeah, I agree. And I never understand, because I give a lot of seminars on these topics, uh, even when I talk about marketing, I, I get into case acceptance eventually. And one of the biggest you know, reasons why I don't think a practice has case acceptance or as high as they could have is because they don't offer third party financing. And I would say there's always a couple outliers in the room that don't offer it. And I'm always surprised to hear why. Most of the time it's based on, well, I don't, my doctor doesn't think our patients need it, which I think is ridiculous, you know, um, but they also say that they don't want to pay the, the merchant fee for it. Another reason I hear is, that their patients only like to pay cash. Um, they, so it's just really interesting to see. I recommend every single practice 
offers third-party financing every single time. Because I remember in my own practice, I had millionaires, millionaires who wanted to to who had who wanted to use third-party financing even though they had the money. And I had people who are have no money to rub two nickels together, but they still want to get treatment done. So you want them to offer it to you want to offer it to them as well. So I always think that's a very interesting um, conversation when you talk to practices as to why they don't want to offer it. So um, I know that um, regulatory scrutiny, scrutiny is high on deferred interest um, and especially medical credit cards or credit cards in the dental space. So can you shed some light on, on your thoughts on the, related to that? Yeah, absolutely. This is a very hot topic right now. And in fact, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau or CFPB for short, the Department of Treasury and the HHS, HHS have all opened up inquiries or published white papers around this recently. Um, and the most recent one actually was CFPB published a white paper in, I think, back in May of this year. And it's called Medical Credit Cards and Financing Plans. And when you really peel back the onion, um, there's, there's a lot of scrutiny there. And it's about a very specific practice called deferred interest. And the way that you spot that is with kind of the tagline, no interest is paid in full. And that really is seen as a predatory lending technique um, from a lot of eyes and particularly from the regulators. And that's something that we don't do here at Cherry. And I think it's an obligation for us to educate practices and patients on really what that is and what's the difference between true zero percent and deferred interest. Yeah, I remember. Uh, so that would be similar to um, a company offering when they, and here's an example, they get a loan for $5,000 out. Um, they pay back $4,900 of it and somehow leave a hundred dollar balance, uh, at the end that they're paying re- retroactive interest on the full $5,000. Is that, is that rather than the remaining balance? Is that what you're referring to here? Yeah, that's right. So deferred interest, again, you spot it by, you know, the no interest is paid in full, which is always the tagline usually. And it's applied if you're late on any payment, whether it's full or partial, after that 0% promotional period is over. So what it does is if that happens, then it applies an interest rate back to the original purchase price retroactively and back to that date too. And so it doesn't matter how much you may have already paid off. And so even if there's not that much of a balance outstanding on that amount, you're going to be paying that full interest rate back to that original price and date. And that's according to this white paper, actually, um, from the CFPB, one in five medical purchases results in deferred interest being assessed. And so that means that one out of five patients that maybe are using one of these medical credit cards out there are getting hit by a fee that could be 27 or 30 percent, you know, over the course of that six or 12 month duration. And it doesn't matter if they've actually apl- uh, paid off most of it by that point. And, you know, and we hear from practices all the time that, hey, these patients are coming and complaining to us at the practice for that because even though it's not really directly the practice's fault, right? It's just that that's where that that patient maybe opened up that credit card, um, and that's that's a tough practice experience to deal with with that patient, and it happens a lot according to the the CFPB. I've been offering care, care credit in other companies for a very long time in the practice. I had up to eight credit uh, financing companies that I've used, and I got to tell you. I'm not their financial advisor, but I definitely discussed with the patients when they took out the card that you need to pay this back in a timely fashion. If you don't, you're going to be hit with credit cards. I I thought it was my obligation to have that discussion with them because a lot of times they were looking at me for assistance in helping them be able to afford it. And if I felt I had to offer it and push them that direction, I wanted to make sure they knew everything that was involved when when something like that came about. So I I, I certainly understand that. And I, and I want to share with you a recent experience I had. So there's a company who was in dental and there's no longer in dental. I don't want to call the company out, but I, um, I actually had to get some work done on an air conditioning unit in my house. And the company that the company used that I bought from uses is this company that used to be in dental, no longer in dental now. And I, I, I'm a very happy third party financing in my personal life. I, I'd rather, if I can get no interest, I'd rather pay it off over time instead of taking money out all the time. So I, I use them for whenever I can. I bought a couch. I did no interest. I bought furniture. I no interest. So I had to buy this upgrade to my air conditioning. I went on no interest and um, I set it up automatically. I went on, once I get the information, I go online and I make it auto pay for the time that the, the no interest. So if it's six months and it was, you know, uh, $6,000, $1,000 a month for six months. Okay. So I have zero owed at the end. So I'll never pay interest on it. And what I thought was really weird was I set this up the day I got the card. I set it up online, changed the amount to auto pay. 
Um, and it didn't, didn't pay attention to it. I just assumed it was paying. The three payments went through and they took out the minimum amount of money. And I went ahead and I went back in. I changed it again. And the next month, they wanted to take out the minimum amount of money. So something was funky about that. I have no idea. I called the company and said they better make it sure that it's paying this amount each month. And then yesterday was the first time the payment came out with the actual amount of money that I asked for from the very beginning. So I don't know what was going on with that company. But that's very predatory because they obviously want me to pay interest. And if I wasn't paying attention, I'd end up with this huge interest bill at the end of the 12 months that I have the loan for Yeah. And unfortunately, whether it actually happens that way or not, right, there's kind of an incentive for the company to want to trigger that deferred interest because that's the only way that they're, you know, maybe making something on that. But, but, and and I think that the other thing that this Consumer Financial Protection Bureau mentioned in the white paper too is that, um, you know, the APR of a typical medical credit card could be in that 27% to 30% range. Whereas right now, I think the average credit card in the US is like 21 or 22%. So they actually made the argument in this white paper that most patients are better off just putting it on a regular credit card than they are, um, you know, using a medical credit card, which tend to trigger for a lot of patients and are, and are actually quite a bit higher. So, so I think one of the questions that people who are listening to want to know, and I it wasn't in our list of questions, but I, I think I can ask you this with that and you can answer it. What makes Cherry different than some of the other credit uh, third party financing companies? In the dental space, so we don't do deferred interest, and that's actually an, an important thing to us, right? Like we are in the business of helping practices and helping patients, and we just don't think that that's in the business of helping patients. Um, and so we do what's called true zero percent, right? And so that means that if, in our scenario, uh, a patient doesn't make their payments on time, we would assess interest only starting on that date and on any remaining amount. Whereas, again, a deferred interest offer would go back to the original purchase price and the original date. And so that's something that we do very differently. We really feel that that's the right thing to do. And, you know, we think it's our obligation to help educate our um, dental providers and patients out there that there are better options out there than those no interest if paid in full options. Got it. The other thing I would like you to touch base on, I mean, I talk about this in my seminars that I give, which Cherry is included, is you kind of have a, a, a unique or, or a, a style to, to, for the office to get the patient approved is a little bit different. You use some technology, you have an easy to use, you know, text message that you send out. Can you just talk about that? Something that I really think makes Cherry different is the application process. Yeah, that's absolutely one of our, you know, secret sauces, if you will, is a really fast application. And obviously we want to make sure that those treatment co- coordinators and the folks at the front desk can have more time to, to do their actual jobs instead of work on financing and payment plan as a part-time job, right? And so as a part of that, we don't do hard credit checks, and we'll probably get into that in a little bit too, but it's also just a really fast and easy application, you know, 60 seconds or less. And, you know, it's 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 a great, what we call our, a first peak option, right? Take a peek with Cherry first to see see what the patient has for options because there's just literally no downside in doing so. And it's fast. Got it. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. And you kind of led us into that direction. There obviously is companies that are hard credit checks and there are companies that do soft credit checks. So can you talk about the difference so people who are listening and watching can actually understand what they're actually getting when they get a soft credit check versus a hard credit check? Yeah. So the first thing I'd mention is that we don't do hard credit checks here. Any At any point in the process, we only do soft credit checks. There are some companies that um, don't do hard credit checks at first, but then if you end up opening a balance or opening the medical credit card, then you do get a hard credit check, right? Um, and most of the time when you're opening up a new credit card, and that includes a medical credit card, it almost usually or always results in a hard credit check. They show up on a credit report. Um, soft credit checks do not show up on your credit report. Um, and so, you know, for again, your first peak option or first look option, best practice is that you don't want to be offering something that does a hard credit check because that could scare patients away from wanting to apply um, uh, from the outset, right? But by kind of assuring that it's a fast and easy and it's like just a really quick peek to see your options, you can, you know, you can read that we can reassure the patient that there truly is no downside in applying and it's, and it's really just a quick look to see your options. Got it. And in general, the other companies that are pretty well known in the industry are, are they also 
um, soft credit checks? Is there a combination or, I mean, is there a wide variety of what these companies doing? Is that something more unique to what Cherry offers now? So where do you stand on those, that answer? I think it is unique to us. Like we only ever do soft and at no point in the process do we do a hard credit check. Some, and it, so you just got to ask the company, you know, any other company that you're working with, if and when they at any point in the process do a hard credit check. I think that that's something that you'll, you'll need to ask because there are definitely companies out there that maybe they say it's not a hard credit check to apply, but then if you end up opening a balance, then they will do a hard credit check at that point, potentially, right? So, but it's good to ask those questions of any prospective financing provider. Got it. Um, ultimately, the reason why an office would use a product like Cherry or other third-party financing is really to make it easy for your patients to say yes to treatment and boost case acceptance. That's ultimately the goal, in my opinion, of using one of these products, okay? Um, so can you talk about what you've seen in you know, in dental, I know you're in other industries as well, but what you've seen in the dental space when it comes to in, you know, using a product like Cherry to boost, to boost case acceptance. Yeah. And first I would say, Hey, it's, it's, there's a lot of value in measuring case acceptance in the first place. I mean, you mentioned dental intelligence. Um, I know that they, they publish studies of case acceptance and according to their studies, um, you know, the, the nationwide average, I believe is around 29% for same day treatment dollar acceptance. And they also published a number, which is I believe 40% for overall treatment dollar acceptance. And so what that means is it's a good, no well, it's a good number to measure first of all, but it means that there's opportunity to move that number up, right? Like there's, it's pretty low, honestly. And so there's a lot of work that a dental practice can do and they can partner with us or um, use other tools to, to help get there. But it's, it's, a, it's a valuable metric to measure. Um, and again, I think this and we will get into a few other things here, too. But I think the number one takeaway um, that studies have shown really moves the needle the most in treatment acceptance is presenting that full treatment price alongside monthly options in terms of actual monthly dollar amounts. And again, that's different than saying, hey, your full treatment price is fourteen hundred dollars and then like waiting for the patient to react or to ask, oh, do you offer financing, right? Like that's, that's actually not the technique to get the case acceptance. Just by having financing options doesn't mean you're going to get that improvement. It's, it's all about how that case and how that treatment plan is presented and how the dollar amount is presented. And that's like really the magic moment there. When I give my workshops and courses, I actually recommend a different way of presenting that overall. I don't like starting off with the actual full cost of treatment. I think sometimes you're going to end up with, with sticker shock potentially. And you may, you know, if a patient hears something and they're, they're, they're not interested right away, even offering them financing, they don't, you don't have a chance of closing the case. So what I actually discuss is I actually recommend, um, figuring out what the total is, but breaking it into 24 months. And if they qualify, no interest payments. And you tell them that. So just as yeah. an example, if it's $7,200, okay, that's $300 a month for 24 months. So I would say to them, well, we can get you your treatment started. It would cost $300 a month for 24 months, no interest financing if you qualify as an example. Yeah. You, you haven't Absolutely. given them the cost of $7,200. And unless they're really good at math, they won't know that right away. Versus yeah. saying, let's say they thought treatment would only be $5,000. Okay. And you tell them it's 7,200 to so that may, that may be some sticker shock. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the, um, I, pre I prefer doing it the way I just recommended, which you say it's $300 a month for 24 months and see what they say. And then yeah. they may say, I don't need to use financing. And then you can know you need to move away from that. Yeah. But that's how I recommend presenting it to the, to the patients. Yeah. I'm curious your thoughts on that. Len, you're ahead of your time going, going that, that direction. Right. But, but that, that's right. I mean, at the end of the day, what you need to do is you need to get monthly dollar amounts in front of the patient. And that's true for any time you're presenting an out-of-pocket cost actually. Right. So, so like you hit the nail on the head there. Absolutely. I mean, there's a few different ways you can do that. Right. But the key, the key thing is to make sure that that's part of the practice workflow to make sure that you're putting monthly options, actual monthly dollar amounts in front of every single patient when you're presenting that treatment plan and, and you were all over that, right? So that's, I think that's a great technique. And I actually, I was the financial person in my office when I ran it. Nobody else talked about money. I was that person. So I was very successful in getting patients to accept treatment because of the way I presented, which is what I teach all over the place because most dentists don't do it themselves. They bring someone in the room and that person has to be really well trained in how to get the patients to say yes to treatment. So 
Um, I'm curious, Andy, um, is there anything else that you wanted to cover before we move into our, our Q and A, my, my uh, lightning round Q and A, and then towards the end, we'll get, um, information on how people can reach out to find out more information about Cherry. Yeah. Maybe it's maybe, maybe one or two more things, right? Like one, one, one question that I typically get asked quite a bit is, um, why are payment plans any better than a credit card? And I think that's a really good question. One thing is that some patients can, or a lot of patients can get a 0% option with a payment plan, right? And they, they can't get a 0% option for six or 12 months with their existing credit card. So it can just be a perk of going to your practice, right? And there's a lot of patients that will enjoy that and appreciate that. Some patients don't have credit cards. Some don't carry them with them, right? And a lot of patients probably don't have a high enough credit limit to transact that full treatment price that, you know, just given the dollar amounts that are involved with some of the procedures that we're offering. And, you know, really the other thing that's, that's, that's valuable about a payment plan, like what we do is it sets patients on a responsible and consistent friendly payoff schedule because it has auto pay set up right out of the gate. Right. And so there's, there's a lot of benefits and that's why we educate our practices um, to, to really focus on saying, hey, we offer cash, credit, or easy monthly payment plans, right? Like it's, it's a payment method that you should be proud of. It's a perk for your practice. And, and it's all about educating patients that you offer it, every single patient, right? Not profiling different patients and only offering to certain people, but really making sure you're offering it to everyone. Um, and if you have a couple minutes too, there's, there's, there's one other method that we really like to, to drive home on increasing case acceptance that I can mention. Sure. Good. Um, so we, we talked about the first thing, right? We, we have what we call the, the three pillar method here. Um, but the first pillar is anytime you're presenting a treatment plan that involves out-of-pocket costs, make sure that you're offering a monthly dollar amount option, right? And you your practice nailed that with what you mentioned. The second pillar is if patients are visiting for fee-for-service procedures or evaluations, or maybe you're a specialty um, clinic, right? And you know that someone's coming in for an evaluation or a treatment, um, make sure that you, you try to get them pre-approved or get in that application link ahead of time um, so that they can see their options. And then you can also know their budget by seeing what approval amount that they have to work with. And that's really valuable. And then the third pillar is kind of the catch-all, right? It's like anytime patient costs or accepted payment me- methods are mentioned, say, hey, we accept cash credit and easy monthly payment plans. And I kind of mentioned that one already, but those are like the, really the three pillars that I think really lead to success and practices that are committing to doing those things do see, you know, 25% boost to their case acceptance. So it's worth absolutely implementing those in your practice. Oh, I think that's great. I think that's great. So, um, Andy, let's, um, before we get information on how to reach out to Cherry, learn more about their product, see a demo, I'm going to um, run you through our, our pod deck section, which is a little Q&A. As I told you before we recorded, these are very easy business-related questions. Um, you don't need to really think about it all that much. Um, just go ahead and answer the questions and make the answers really short, okay? We're going to try to get through eight to 10 of these. So, how many hours a day do you think you work on average? Um, I would say at least 10 or up to 12, depending on the day. Okay, easy. See how easy that was? What habits have helped make you successful? Making every minute count. Like you, you have to, in between meetings, um, being deliberate about which meetings you go to, getting something done in every single meeting, but you have to make every minute count. And I think that that's key to success in a professional environment. Being time efficient, in other words. So um, how have you gone about developing key partnerships? Yeah, I think it's really about it's finding the partners that have the same objective and and mission that you do. Right. You can't fit, I guess, a square peg in a round hole. Um, And the same is true with partners. Right. There are folks out there that have the same macro goals and you align on those goals first and you're a natural fit to work together. And I think that that's absolutely key. Great. Who has been your greatest inspiration? Yeah, you know, I had a um, a mentor back when I was in the army who was a special forces officer, and he and he was absolutely instrumental in in how I shaped my early career in terms of setting goals and what branch I wanted to do with my time in the service. Um, and I always draw back on my time spent with with him, um, and you know, and, and that's really what started my career trajectory. I think in in the way that it is. Um, just because it started with, with me being an officer in the army. That's great. And by the way, thank you for your service. I appreciate it. So I've got to, forgot to mention that earlier. So I wanted to get that out. Um, what business related book has inspired you the most or what is your favorite book? 
Well, I'm obviously in the sales profession, right? And so I think one of my favorite all-time sales books is called Spin Selling by Neil Rackham. And I think the tidbit in that book that I that still stands out to me that day is the most valuable or the best you, you, the best sales conversation is one where the customer would be willing to pay for the conversation itself, right? And so we as sales professionals need to, professionals need to bring value to every single conversation that we have. That's a challenge that I, of course, have to my team. But I think that's like the right mindset, right, is to make the conversation valuable. And I think that that's like it was a one liner, I think, in that book that just stuck out for me like many years even after reading it. That's great. If you could take a class to learn anything you wanted, what would it be? You know, I would spend more time taking some computer science classes. I took I studied chemical engineering. But now that I'm in the technology um, space. I think having some computer science credentials would be really interesting. And I, and I really enjoy that sort of thing. So maybe, you know, this second level of computer science, CS 201, maybe it would be. That's good. Um, do you make a to-do list every day, weekly, or when? I do. I, I would say every day, um, usually when the day starts and when the day ends, I kind of um, synchronize the list of what I need to get done um, or what I got done and what I need to get done and what's spilling in to the next day. Two last questions. Describe Mondays for you in one word. Very busy. Or I, busy. That's two words, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just messing busy. with you. Busy. No, okay. one, that's one word. That's good. And last question. This is a tough one, but I'll, t- I'll state it by saying it could be both professional or personal, either one. What is one subscription you cannot live without? Salesforce. Salesforce has been a great uh, tool for our, our company. And, uh, you know, we've built a lot around it and we leverage it to hopefully it's fullest and we, we learn something new about it every day. That's great. So, Andy, um, I know one of the questions I was going to ask you um, was, you know, talk about um, interest rates, talk about merchant fees. But I know that you would rather have somebody set up a, a demo or a, a call with someone at Cherry. So, can you give the, the listeners, viewers, the information on how they can do that, please? Absolutely. We would welcome the opportunity to, to dive into more detail than this presentation with you and your practice. The place to go is withcherry.com slash Tau. So it's withcherry.com slash T-A-U. Um, and that would be a place for you to go. Book a, a demo with one of our um, product experts. It takes takes about 20 or 30 minutes and they'll they'll go through all of the different plans that we offer. And the reason I can't really quote fees is because it really depends on how, how long you want to offer 0% to your patients and that sort of thing, right? So we'll really go through those goals and see what goals you have and, and see how payment plans can help get you there. So again, with cherry.com slash TAU, it's the place to go. Any final thoughts before we end the podcast, Andy? Thanks so much for your time um, today. And hopefully we'll see you um, on the other side of the conversation with your practice and, and seeing how, Cherry payment plans can be a tool to increase your case acceptance. Well, this was great, Andy. Thank you so much for joining me today. Guys, if you uh, want to learn more about Cherry, he gave you the information. It's with cherry.com slash TAU, my last name. Set up a call with one of their team members to learn more about how it, how it can help. Um, if you like the episode, please share it. Please let your colleagues know. Uh, please like us. Please promote it. Um, do whatever you can. Subscribe. Um, this is great. I love, I love coming to your inbox. I want to thank the sponsors, both Dental Intelligence and the doc sites for their support. And as always, as I end my webinars and seminars and podcasts, remember your reputation matters until the next episode. Andy, thank you so much for joining me today. And we'll talk to everyone soon.